There really aren't that many ways of monitoring insects at landscape scale, and that's very unfortunate because insects constitute most of the biodiversity in a terrestrial ecosystem. Traditionally monitoring something like moths, nocturnal insects, requires setting out a light at night with a sheet and then staying up till 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., whatever it is, whenever your target species is active, and manually taking them, taking specimens or taking photographs of these moths. A moth box is a really cool automated insect monitoring system. It turns on a really bright light according to a schedule. The fun thing that we know about moths is they're attracted to really bright lights. So they, they come down, they fly, they land on our little target area, and then we have a really high resolution camera that photographs the entire surface that the moths can land on. These photos then we can collect later and feed them to our own homebrewed open source MothBot scripts, we can actually pre-organize all this stuff. And so a skilled taxonomist can look through a whole night's worth of data in something like five to 10 minutes. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> the MothBox is a fully open source automated light trap that attracts and photographs moths and other nocturnal insects. This project is supported in part by the Wild Labs Awards 2024 in partnership with ARM, because half of all species on Earth are insects, monitoring their presence across landscapes is key to understanding changes in the biodiversity and health of different ecosystems. The traditional process for monitoring insects, however, is extremely difficult, requiring an expert researcher to manually wait for and identify insects in one place at one time. The MothBox automates this process, letting a researcher monitor an entire landscape at once. The MothBox system is not only entirely open source, but also comes with extensive documentation on DIY construction, use, and repair, as well as the data processing pipeline. This ensures its scientific validity while also making it accessible for scientists, conservationists, and community members across the world. The MothBox team includes Kit Quitmeyer of Digital Naturalism Laboratories and Bree Johns, a Fulbright Fellow studying the MothBox as a practical example of open science hardware. We started developing the MothBox in 2022 and have been finding small amounts of money to push the project along. When the Wild Labs Awards 2024 opportunity came up, we jumped on it. With this, we could finally turn our initial prototypes into a practical conservation tool. After receiving our Wild Labs award, we began iterative development and testing of the MothBox at DynaLab in Gamboa, Panama. We then traveled to the Azuero Peninsula to work with ProEco Azuero, a Panamanian reforestation NGO. We collected baseline data on their reforestation project while providing training to the reforestation crews on MothBox use. We also visited La Fortuna Research Station, where scientists deployed mothboxes for several months in unique cloud forest habitat. With all the data we were collecting, we needed to develop better systems for file storage and data analysis. We developed a system of metadata collection to align with Darwin Core standards and began work on MothBot, a machine learning tool for processing mothbox data. We then held several more iterations of MothBox building and use workshops for scientists and community members, such as with Georgia Tech in Atlanta and the Smithsonian and Pontera in Panama. You don't need experts to set them up, but these empower experts to do far more. These iterative real-world field tests provided valuable feedback to make the device more robust while also providing better user interactions for the researchers. We've had many achievements along the way. After several rounds of hardware development, MothBox 4.0 can now be built inexpensively in any part of the world. The MothBox system is certified open source by the Open Source Hardware Association, and it comes with detailed documentation on DIY construction, use, and repair, as well as the data processing pipeline. More people are independently building their own MothBoxes around the world, and it feels like every week now, we hear about yet another person in another country who built a MothBox. Another huge win was creating a usable beta version for the MothBot machine learning system. 
This lets users without a programming background rapidly process all their data. The capping achievement of the Mothbox team over the course of the Wild Labs grant was our expedition to Cerro Hoya, a remote national park in Panama. We climbed the mountain from near sea level to over 1500 meters, deploying 19 Mothboxes along the way. We camped out near the summit for three nights as the Mothboxes simultaneously collected data across the entire elevation gradient in a way that would be impossible to do with any other tool. We are still processing the data, but already we can tell how strikingly different the insect biodiversity is in these microclimates that are separated by only 100 meters of elevation. Over the course of the project period, we routinely shared updates on the Wild Labs platform to keep the conservation technology community up to date on our work and will continue to do so. Our next steps are to develop a mass producible version of the Mothbox for global deployment. We'd once again like to thank Wild Labs and ARM for their support on this project and putting us in contact with other organizations working on insect monitoring.